In this lecture, we're going to look at the concept of parallelism in sentences or faulty parallelism in which the sentences are not parallel. So we'll look at the concept and we'll also look at some examples. All right, let's look at a couple of examples of faulty parallelism, a pair of sentences, and see which one sounds smoother or better to you. First pair. I use my TV remote control to change channels, to adjust the volume, and for turning the set on and off. Or, I use my TV control, remote control to change the channels, to adjust the volume, and to turn the set on and off. Which one sounds better? The second one. Why? Because it's parallel. We have a series of infinitives. I use my remote control to change channels, to adjust the volume, to turn the set on and off. A series of infinitives. So that is an example of parallelism. The first sentence is a faulty parallelism because we have to change the channels, to adjust the volume, and for turning the set on and off. That is not parallel. Here's another example of a pair of sentences, one of which is faulty parallelism and one is parallel. Which one sounds better? One option the employees had was to take a cut in pay. The other was longer hours of work. Or, one option the employees had was to take a cut in pay. The other was to work longer hours. The second sentence is parallel because again we have a series of infinitives. To take a cut to work longer hours. The first sentence is not parallel. It says to take a cut the other was longer hours, not an infinitive. A third example. Which sentence sounds smoother? The refrigerator has a cracked vegetable drawer, one of the shelves is missing, and a strange freezer smell. The second sentence. The refrigerator has a cracked vegetable drawer, a missing shelf, and a strange freezer smell. The second I sentence is parallel. It has a series of adjectives and nouns. Describes every one of the things describes or follows has. The refrigerator has a cracked vegetable drawer. The refrigerator has a missing shelf. The refrigerator has a strange freezer, freezer smell. The first sentence doesn't do that. It says the freezer has a cracked vegetable drawer. One of the shelves is missing. And a, f and a strange uh, freezer smell. So that goes with the has. The refrigerator has a cracked drawer. The refrigerator has a f strange freezer smell. But it doesn't make sense, the sentence to read, the refrigerator has one of the shelves is missing. That's why a sentence fails in parallelism, where the second one has drawer, has shelf, has strange smell. So that is parallel. Now that we've seen a few examples of parallelism or faulty parallelism, I think we're ready to come up with a definition. A definition of parallelism is Words in a series that have the same structure. A sentence has faulty parallelism when one or more of the elements differ from the structure established by the first item in the series. That's the important part. The first item in a series determines the structure and everything else in the series has to follow the same structure for the sentence to be parallel. Now that we have a definition of parallelism, let's look at some more examples that I hope will make clear to you what exactly we're trying to do when we say that a sentence is not parallel. So, 
First, we have a non-parallel sentence. I attended three classes in the morning, studied most of the afternoon, and my sales job was in the evening. So, the first item in the series establishes the pattern. I attended classes. We have a subject followed I followed by a noun, I'm sorry, a verb in the past tense followed by an object. That's the pattern. Subject, verb, object. The subject is shared throughout the whole sentence. I attended I studied af in the afternoon. I and my sales job was in the evening. That's not parallel. It doesn't work. So, rewriting the sentence to make it parallel. I attended three classes in the morning. I studied most of the afternoon. And I worked at my sales job in the evening. Now we have a series of verbs in the past tense that all work with the subject of the sentence, which is I. I attended, studied, and worked. The next sentence. Mel spends his free time reading, listening to music, and he watches TV sports. All right. The structure that's set up by the sentence at the beginning and the first item in the series is Mel spends his free time reading. We have a present participle adjourned here. Mel does what? He spends his time reading. Mel spends his time listening to music. Mel spends his time and he watches TV sports. So it's not parallel. So to fix that, we have to rewrite he watches TV sports to be the same pattern. Mel spends his free time reading, listening, and watching. So Mel spends his free time reading, listening to music, and watching TV sports. Then we have a series of present participles or gerunds that make the sentence parallel. A second set of examples here. After the camping trip, I was exhausted, irritable, and wanted to eat. All right, the structure here is a subject followed by the verb was, followed by a series of adjectives in using the past participle. I was exhausted, I was irritable, and I was wanted to eat. That makes no sense, all right? So, fixing that is easy. We just needed to need to change wanted to eat to an adjective. After the camping trip, I was exhausted, irritable, and hungry. So we have a series of adjectives, exhausted, irritable, hungry. Next sentence. My hope for retirement is to be healthy, to live in a comfortable house, and having plenty of money. Again, we have a series of infinitive phrases. My hope for retirement is to be healthy, is to live in a comfortable house, is having plenty of money. That makes no sense. So we have to change all the last sentence or last uh, object to a infinitive phrase. My hope for retirement is to be healthy, to live in a comfortable house, and to have plenty of money. And one final example, a non-parallel sentence. Nightly, Fred puts out the trash, checks the locks on the door, and the burglar alarm is turned on. Here we have faulty parallelism because the structure set up by the first item in the series, Fred puts out the trash. So we have Fred, verb, object. Fred, verb, object. So in the last item, we need Fred, verb, object. So instead of, and the burglar alarm is turned on, we want Fred to turn on the burglar alarm. So looking at a parallel sentence. Nightly, Fred puts out the trash, checks the locks on the doors, and turns on the burglar alarm. Now we have a balanced 
parallel sentence in which the verbs are in the same order, present tense verb followed by its direct object. Puts out the trash, checks the locks, turns on the burglar alarm. So I hope from these examples you can see what parallelism is and how to fix it. Checking for parallelism is an editing skill. It's not something that you need to worry about when you're writing the first draft of any document, but it is something that during the editing phase, you want to check to make sure that you don't have instances of faulty parallelism, so you fix those before you publish your final draft of the document.